Welcome back. In the last video, we have discussed the scaling of the racket efficiency from lab scale devices up to racket modu modules efficiencies. This annual graph shows the evolution of the racket efficiencies for modules over time. Often, the module records are achieved on research lab scale level using expensive manufacturing approaches. However, this does not imply that the modules processed in mass production have the same performance as the record module efficiencies. The objective of this video lecture is to discuss the relation between the record efficiency of the modules and the efficiencies of the modules in mass production. All the advances in research, demonstration of record lab scale cells and improved manufacturing methods lead to the continuous increase in efficiencies of the modules and the modules in production. A simple model to describe the evolution of the best efficiencies of PV modules in time has been introduced by Gutzberger. The efficiency evolution in this model is described by an exponential equation that approaches the efficiency corresponding to the theoretical efficiency limit. T start represents the year where the new PV technology was introduced and tau development represents the characteristic development time of the technology. What can be seen is that in the early development stage efficiencies improve rapidly however in the later phase this evolution slows down. It takes more and more effort to make improvements and to get closer to the theoretical best efficiency. In this later phase, the PV technology can be considered as a mature technology. Note, it does not mean that it is a competitive technology with other technologies. Let's look at the module efficiency development of commercial products based on monocrystalline silicon PV technology in the period of 2005 up to 2020. The efficiencies are collected from the reference given here. You can see that the advances are significant for the mono silicon crystalline silicon back surface field technology. Efficiency went up from around 15% in 2010 for a module up to 17.5% in 2018. However, mono crystalline silicon wafers have been mainly used for other crystalline silicon technology, like the NPERT produced by Ying Li or the PERC crystalline silicon technology uh, produced by companies like GCL, Hanwha Q-Cells, GA Solar, Yinko, NIO, Motech, SolarWorld, Tongwai and Trina Solar. Comor commercial module efficiencies of up to 20% in 2020 have been achieved for the PERC technology. The upcoming technology based on passivated contacts like the Topcon has achieved conversion efficiencies for commercial modules up to 21% already in 2020. The data points here are from modules from LG, Silivo, Trina Solar and Jollywood. The orange dot represent efficiencies of the commercial IBC based modules of SunPower and LG. Module efficiencies of slightly above 21% were already on the market in 2020. The green dots represent the heterojunction crystalline silicon PV technology. The data is from companies like Sanyo, Panasonic, Sunpreme and REC. As can be seen, the technologies are still advancing and the evolution of the efficiencies does not level off yet. If we project these efficiencies versus the demonstrated record efficiency for crystalline silicon module based on the heterojunction technology as demonstrated by the Japanese company Kanaka, we see that still a lot of room for improvement exists. If we would use the earlier introduced simple model that describes the evolution of the best efficiencies of PV modules in time, we can make a prediction on the advances of the commercial crystalline silicon modules in the near future. A rough estimation is that the commercial crystalline silicon modules will see a further absolute improvement of conversion efficiencies in the order of 2-3% up to 2030. In summary, we have discussed the improvement of efficiencies of the most important PV technologies so far. But what about the cost prices? In the next video lecture, I will discuss the learning curves of PV technology. So see you in the next video.